the main aim was to capture the image using the camera mounted on the FPGA and then use various uh, color detection algorithms and uh, path following algorithms and uh, mount it on a board there is a theme of camera mounted in the FPGA board and here is the SPI display TFT display so what we have done till now is that we have used uh, the image colors uh, camera to detect different colors so here as you can see i have three color blocks with me that is red green and blue so what can this will happen is if i place a red blocks uh, in front of the camera as you can see the red led on the fpga board lights up similarly if i place a blue led then the blue uh, led also on the uh, fpga board lights up and same goes with the green uh, uh, green blocks so also everything is being live streamed on the tft display at a very good refresh rate of 15 fps so normally this kind of thing is not possible on a typical microcontroller as i am running the spi bus at 60 megahertz or we can take it even to 70 but that is limited by the control display and not by the controller or in its case the fpga board so here we are uh, capturing the data from the camera at a rather high frequency of 24 megahertz here we have a decent amount of uh, internal memory which can store an int uh, entire camera frame inside the fpga and normally what would happen is that uh, if simpler devices are used that we cannot fit uh, the entire frame inside the camera uh, inside the fpga board so here we have used some uh, sort of compression method like we scale down the input image data from the camera and then we fit it inside the fpga board if i put it as a large distance from the camera it will not detect this is because i have done a programming in such a way that it should fill at least 70% of the screen so that it get uh, when so as to get detected otherwise if you can see like any random stray object which is green in color which comes in front of the camera then also it, the light would light up but here it doesn't happen and sometimes occasionally the blue light would li light up because we are standing directly under the light and the light has very large amount of blue content so that can effect and shadows would also uh, put uh, pose some problem in the uh, this camera method so what we can do to circumvent that is that we are currently trying to change the image uh, processing way like we are doing the rgb thresholding method but we can change that to the ycbcr method so in that way uh, we can separate the luma content of the picture so the the effects of lighting and other things uh, like uh, shadows etc can completely get removed there is no limit to the speed of execution what you can do in the fpga so currently we are handling everything at 100 megahertz which is typically not at all uh, possible in a normal microcontroller we had to interface a cmos camera with our fpj but before doing so we tried it out with arduino first and uh, while doing so we got a lot of errors the problem ended up with the connection and uh, the wrong pin assignment so we need to be really careful about that we had to basically write code from scratch and always we need to Uh, check whether we are doing it correct or not. So we always use the oscilloscope to debug whether we are getting the correct output, whether it was configured properly or not. And another issue is with FPGA is that we cannot just use a single pin like we use in a microcontroller. Like we can keep polling for an event and we just wait like that till that event happens, then we do some action. So here there are certain uh, pins are uh, limited to what they are supposed to do. It's not like any pin can be assigned to the purpose. If you browse through the, the reference manuals of the FPGA, you will come to know that there are certain pins which can be used at clock inputs. So if they are not used in that way, then they will encounter many issues in the FPGA. in arduino etc in which we found abundance information there is like they wait for an event they wait for the camera to capture the image and they uh, send the value pixel by pixel to the data to the computer but here we cannot afford to do that because here that will be very slow and we'll lose the advantage of using a fpga so here we have to basically use the internal ram and if we don't write the code properly then it will end up using our logic resources of the fpga which is not right the logic resources are to be used for the programming of the other hardware like we interface for the robot or other thing so if we write the code properly then you'll use the internal dram which is specially made for storage purposes inside the fpga another thing in fpga is that it is extremely voltage sensitive so here it if it says that it is 3.3 volt uh, limited to 3.3 volt operation then you cannot afford to go above 3.4 volts or you'll uh, damage the fpga 
internship basically offered me a lot of chance to explore many things which is not actually always related to your uh, curriculum but also the social way which uh, is inculcated to us in the EYC program like we had many training programs in, uh, given by the IIT Bombay staff and external very highly reputed uh, people and they, got, told, they had topics like geopolitics and social conservation and environmentalist and many other things also in the lab here you will find many other opportunities like it is not only limited to your domain you can always uh, mingle with the other people who are there with working on other projects so you'll get the chance to explore their fields as well and the resources over here are immense you will not need anything like which is not over here you can have everything from laser cutting to 3d printing to every other uh, electrical equipment which you will need to get your project done